Good afternoon, everyone, Mr. Kalkutsky at Beckman Catholic. It's Wednesday, December 16th, with an update for you on a variety of topics today. Let's begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O God, merciful healer, we pray for your help. Keep us from illness, heal those who are sick, protect those who care for others. May your love be seen as we pray for those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Happy third week of Advent. Uh, if you notice, there's a uh, pink on the PowerPoints today since it is the third week of Advent or rose color as well. Um, there are a couple opportunities coming up this week as you prepare for Christmas that we wanted to make you aware of. This Saturday at the Basilica on the 19th at 9.30 in the morning, there is family adoration time. It's about a half hour long and it's a great opportunity to learn more about Eucharistic adoration. And then next Tuesday night from 6.30 to 7.30, there'll be praise and worship adoration at the Basilica as well. And as part of that, Nicole Wolf, a recent Beckman grad who's a current net missionary, will be speaking as well. So those opportunities are coming up if you'd like to take advantage of them as you prepare for Christmas. The governor had a weekly press conference earlier today, uh, made some changes in the disaster proclamation, including limitations on attendees at events for sporting items at high schools and youth sports. And so starting tomorrow through January 8th, spectators are limited to members of a participant's household. We have not received the definition of what this means. And so in the meantime, while we wait to get further clarification on that, um, we are keeping the two spectator limit in effect. We did receive word from West Delaware earlier this afternoon that they are going to be keeping the two spectator limit in effect for tomorrow night's wrestling meet. Um, and we're so we will wait to get this further clarification of what this means in terms of individuals from households and how that's supposed to operate. Um, and once we receive that, we'll provide more additional information so that you know what that means for you and your families. But at this point, we'll keep the two person limit per, per participant uh, until we get that further clarification. So the reason that these things are changing is that numbers overall are down. So let's continue to keep that trend going. So things that you can do to help with that, again, stay home when you're sick, wear a face covering or mask correctly and consistently, social distance when possible, wash your hands and use hand sanitizer, and avoid large gatherings and crowds when possible. We are continuing to do live streaming of events in the competition gym. So last night we did the girls varsity, boys varsity, and the girls JV or the freshman sophomore game. Um, so when we have those nights when everybody's at home, it'll be anything that's in the competition gym. Again, our YouTube channels where you can find links to upcoming events here at home. Uh, as we receive links from our competitors at our um, visiting schools, when we're out, when we're out and about, uh, we'll let you know that information as well through email and text messages so that you have that information to pass along. Also this evening, uh, starting at six o'clock and then again on Monday night, at six o'clock, our band and choir concerts that were held earlier this month will be replayed as part of KMCH's Festival of Christmas. Uh, tonight we're on with three other organizations and schools. And so that starts at six. Um, we are not the first ones on, but if you look at KMCH's website or Facebook page uh, later today or on Monday, they'll have the exact times that those concerts will air. And so you can listen to those live on the radio or if you have family or relatives that are outside the KMCH listening area, you can go to kmch.com and on their page, they do have a, a streaming option to be able to listen to those. Just a couple of reminders about finals again, we start semester finals Friday. So 48, less than 48 hours from now, we wish our students good luck as they get ready to take those tests. A uh, couple of reminders as we get into those, students in grades nine through 12 are only required to be present at school when they have a final exam. So if they have a study hall period or classes where finals do not happen, and we have some of those if they're more project-based uh, courses, um, they do not need to report those for those periods. Only the periods where they have a test to take or an activity that's going on that day do they need to be here. They also have the ability to eat lunch off campus for grades nine through 12 on Friday and Monday. Um, we'll talk to students tomorrow a little bit about this as well. We would encourage them to drive individually, not gather in large groups, uh, and there still are restrictions at a lot of businesses in terms of um, amount of people that they're, they're seating in their restaurants. Um, so we ask students to plan appropriately and know that they do need to be back in time for their 1230 tests when we have our lunch break. Um, students are welcome to eat lunch here at school on 18th and 21st and lunch is still free. Um, so that's an option as well. If they plan to eat lunch here 
in grades nine through 12, we need them to notify us um, in those mornings, so Friday and Monday morning, so we make sure we have enough food prepared. Uh, seventh and eighth grade students are required to be here um, for the entire time periods from the first fi final through the end of the day. They are not allowed to leave over the lunch hour. Um, and so if you need to arrange transportation for your kids, um, pickup can be at 145 on Friday and Monday and then 1115 on Tuesday. If we have students out for COVID related absences, finals can be made up the week of January 4th. Uh, and just to review quickly of the schedule, once again, we do not start on Friday until 8.30. Uh, so our first test is for first period on Friday at 8.30 to 9.45. And then we do period two, lunch, and period three. And again, wrapping up at 1.45. On Monday, it's periods four, five, and six. And then on Tuesday, it'll be period seven and eight in the morning. So again, 75 minute periods for each, for each class. And then that one hour lunch break from 11.30 to 12.30 as well. As of today, uh, our STO goal is at 47%. Uh, again, this is a great program that provides tuition assistance for many of our students. Over 40% of our students and families at Beckman Catholic um, have received STO funding for the current school year. The contributions made to the STO program are eligible for a 65% state tax credit. So if you donate $100, you get $65 of that back as a state tax credit. And then uh, you also get the tax deduction as well on top of that. Please visit ourfaithsto.org for more information and ways that you can donate. Again, we're looking for some volunteers. Um, we need an individual to take the midnight to 1 a.m. adoration hour on Wednesday mornings from the months of January and February. And we are looking for volunteers help with snow removal this winter. If you know of anybody who's interested in either opportunity, please contact the office for more details. Uh, a reminder as well that Textile Brewing is sponsoring a fundraiser for Beckman Catholic and Xavier Elementary through this Friday. They have three different packages that you can purchase uh, and uh, see our Facebook page for more information. And again, thanks to Textile Brewing, all our local businesses who support our Catholic schools. And in the afternoon on some good news as well. First off, congratulations to Mason White. He was named the Telegraph Herald's Athlete of the Week for last week. So congratulations to Mason. We want to say thanks to Mrs. Slade and Mr. Denner, along with our jazz band and chamber choir students. Um, we hosted a annual music tour virtually yesterday from our gymnasium. In most years, we go to our area elementary Catholic schools, uh, provide a little concert for them, have an opportunity to talk to students about Beckman Catholic um, and spread some Christmas cheer. Obviously this year with visitor limitations, that was not as feasible. So we provided a concert for them yesterday morning from here at school. So thanks to all those who participated and made that possible. We also wanna say thanks to Joan Raker. Last year, Joan donated her gala prize from the raffle back to Beckman Catholic. And through that generosity, Joan's donation has played a role in helping us to get a few uh, new items here at school, including a new snowplow truck, a new wrestling mat for our competitions, as well as some up grades in lighting in the competition gym. So here's some photos of those items that we have. We were able to use that wrestling mat last week uh, after it arrived for our um, home wrestling meet. It's much easier to move as well, and the wrestlers could attest to that. And then our other pictures of the new plow truck that we have to do snow removal instead of contracting that out, we're able to do that in-house. So thanks to Joan for those um, those opportunities to make that happen. If you're interested in helping to purchase items on our school wish list, there's a list on our, our webpage. You can also contact Larry Wilson, our development office, for more details. That's our update for today. Again, when we get more information in regards to the, spec, the new spectator limitations that are out, we will pass that on. Uh, most likely, we will get that later today or tomorrow. So be on the lookout for something Thursday or Friday with more of that information. Have a great rest of your day.